Big ups to the lads today. We had a full uh, Peloton lobby. DL Guiga joined us for uh, for a ride, and a new uh, a new challenger has appeared. David Kelly joined me for all three of my rides today. I know you're going to say three rides, not four rides. I had to be done at uh, 30 minutes early today because we had uh, uh, contractors come by. This time they came 30 minutes early. But that's okay, because at least it's done. Hey, hello, hello, D. Kelly. Great rides today. It really do be your own. We rode together for 90 minutes. At the end of it, our total output was like 1190 something. Not even, no, no BM and no DM. They beat me by three kilojoules in 90 minutes. So that genuinely running the numbers on that, I'm pretty sure it was like we were 0.3% apart. <laughs> and I, it was not like, oh, I could have gone a little harder and gotten there. It was like I was busting my ass, man. I PB'd on that second ride where it was 18 minutes out of the saddle, Iron Butterfly in Agata de Vida. I PB'd. I, did, I went into the ride not expecting to PB. I finished the warm up not at a PB pace, and by just every minute, I was like, "All right, just keep it going," because I got a Navy Seal behind me. And then I get up by 16 kilojoules, and then by the time the climb's done, I'm only up by eight kilojoules. Anyway, the Stroop waffles, man. Best part was Cody Rigsby's two-minute standing PSA on boxers. Can I just say a couple of things? I, I love when people I ride with talk about the rides because it reminds me that it's like the ninth time I've done that ride. There is a point in that ride where um, he shouts out somebody's name and their name is like Boxer Mom. And he says, please tell me that you mean this kind of boxing. And he pantomimes like Mike Tyson and not the other kind of boxer and then it turns out he's talking about boxer underpants and i'm like my brother in in bike he's talking about a dog there's the, anytime someone puts boxer in their peloton username there's absolutely no doubt that it's a, it's a breed of dog it's the only thing that american cyclists love more than college football dropout streams is back to top two watch out I, you know what let's slash marker sap I'd like to apologize to Dropout Streams. Yesterday they said, I'm second on the leaderboard. Uh, can I be rude to you? And I deflected. I deflected their commentary. I said, you can't be rude to anybody, or at least you don't have my permission. Plus, what are you doing here? Shouldn't you be circle jerking on the Super Auto Pets Discord about how chicken is overrated even though nobody in Arena ever uses it? It's just the top 10 players in the world playing versus against one another. Like, oh, the most overpowered unit of the game right now is the ostrich. Anyway, um, then at the end of the stream, I laughed at them because they fell down to number three. And then I checked, uh, while I was recording yesterday, I checked and they were number one. So first off, I apologize for my rudeness. And then secondly, I apologize for uh, being derogatory, especially because you, I mean, you hit the come up. What can I say? Real recognizes real. Yeah, what's up? Did the scavenger to our tent? Yes. <laughs> and also, uh, in the, our garbage can, you know how they're... Yeah, there's still dog poop. Because they got squished. Yeah, I know. Yeah, and I, I, when, when you say someone, I know what that means. <laughs> so what's the, what's the problem? Well, there's two separate issues here, okay? One is, and this is great because it's kind of a, ooh, it's a callback to a, an Am I the Asshole post from a long time ago. S last garbage day, someone threw a, a bag of dog poop in our garbage can before we were able to bring it inside. So people go out for a walk and then they're just like, my dog pooped, I'm going to throw my poop in the closest garbage can I could find. So be it. I, when we did the, oh, I, I'm sorry, I forgot I was on a timer. <laughs> when we did um, the React court for that, I was of the opinion that it's not that big of a deal. Now, my wife and I have a slight difference of agreement, a difference of opinion. It happened to us um, la uh, last week, two weeks ago, something like that. 
I don't really uh, have a serious problem with it. However, the problem is the next time our garbage got taken, because the dog poop was at the bottom, it got squished by all of our other garbage bags. And then when the garbage truck came to pick it up, then tipped it over, the dog poop didn't come out of the garbage can. So now I got to reach in with like some barbecue tongs, grab the dog poop bag and throw it in a garbage can or a garbage bag and then bag it up so that we can actually get this going. By the way, I'm, we're in trouble, man. It's not that big of a deal, but it is, it's annoying for sure. Oh, it was in a doggy bag, but it just got squished by the remaining garbage. So like the bag is stuck to the bottom of the garbage can. But anyway, uh, every day before garbage or before recycling, we put it out maybe like 10 p.m. We wake up in the morning and check it just to see if it's been taken. And someone has come by and taken away all the cans. My wife considers it a violation of our, of, of the societal fabric. I personally, I don't really mind. And honestly, there's something kind of nice about it is in our old neighborhood, people used to take all of our cans uh, as well, but they were substantially less nice about it. They used, but they used to be very, um, basically they didn't give a shit about you before. They would just take your recycling bin, tip it over, take all the cans and the bottles and then leave all the plastic and the containers like right there on your driveway and then you would have to clean it up. Now, even if the thing is like mounded up like crazy, they pick through the recycling bin, they take all the cans, and when I go out in the morning, it's reorganized like better than I left it. So I'm actually like, I'm, I kind of take it as like a positive about our neighborhood, you know, returning to like the idea of we live in a society. Holy cow, we live to fight another day against Kiki Booba. <laughs> but Rune Cat lived to fight another day. Come on, man. Okay, now we're reworking the squad. Two steaks could have been the play. Yeah, absolutely. I was hoping to get a distributed food, man. Was that the end of the can story? Nope. Um, the person that took the can ended up... I saw them this morning. It was um, Rob Lowe. It was Rob Lowe. That's the end of it. You thought the story was boring? Nope. Not at all. Okay, honestly, we're in the top three, okay? So I, I, I'm proud of myself, but also I gotta put this, I, I'm not messing with you, brother. Like we're, <laughs> we're doing whatever we can to, to survive here. Now you probably don't need the, the black screen up because you can hear the sound of the dice rolling over and over, but I don't want you to be able to, to steal my tactics, okay? I don't mind someone taking my cans though, but I was thinking, you know what I should do? I should like stay up late and find the person who's taken the cans. Good game, good game, Kiki Booba, good game, good game. I didn't see what I got, 50, 57 levels. Oh, it doesn't update. I need to, I need to close the game to see how I did. And uh, I was thinking that I should go out and see them stealing the cans. I mean, stealing is maybe not the word that I mean to use there. Acquiring the cans and then say, hey, I want my cut. I want them to, I w I'm okay with them taking the cans themselves and then taking it to the recycling depot, but I want 10%. I want 10, not of your whole haul, but I want 10% of what you get from my cans, okay? You don't get a cut for making the trash? I paid the 10 cent recycling refund deposit on every single one of those cans. That's my property. You should pay them. I'm not paying them. I already put my property taxes pay for the recycling. I'm already paying for the stuff to be taken away. Minus two? What's the minus two for saying that my property taxes pay for the recycling? That's, that's not, you can't minus two, like, reality. You can be unhappy about it, but there's no, there's no minus two to be had there. Watch me. Okay, well, fair enough. Yeah? Our tire is completely flat? Yeah. Oh, my God. 
Oh no. And then I got out and looked and it was completely flat. Oh jeez. So I was like, oh my god. So yeah. I just backed away into the bottom. Where's uh where is she? Okay. Oh okay. Yeah, can you call like the service? Do I call the Here, I'll, uh, um have, let me finish this one and then I'll I'll come up. I was wondering cuz I was driving yesterday and I it didn't feel right. So I went out and I checked the uh, our tire and the PSI was like half of what it's supposed to be. So then I um went to the gas station, filled it up, drove home, checked it and it was like totally fine. Like it didn't lose any pressure on the way home. And I was like, that's good. But then apparently overnight, it must have had a slow leak or something like that. I had the exact same thing yesterday. It's going around. I looked through the tire too. And I was like, you know, what's going on here? Half is like wheel damagingly low, right? I Googled it. It was at 22 PSI. Save me. We lived. I Googled it and it was like, don't drive if your tire's under 20 PSI. And I was like, let's go. <laughs> also, I, would, I always think about this every time I fill up my tire. Do you know how easy it is to um, deflate a tire? You literally just unscrew the cap and then turn it upside down and push it into the hole. And it goes like, pfft. we... I it, are so lucky that we live in a society. Otherwise, like you could just at nighttime, you could deflate everybody's tires on your block in like less than half an hour. You ever try siphoning gasoline? I've never tried siphoning gasoline. It's, it seems harder than letting the air out of a tire, though. <laughs> Please just let me get to the top half that I could resign and help my wife. DC error. What? They, they put out a hit on me. You'd have to slash your own tire, too. Yeah, I suppose. Just to avoid the, the appearance of impropriety. Small price to pay for a complete lead. What, what's the opposite of a victimless crime? What's a crime that uh, has no benefactor? That's every crime? No, the frick, it isn't every crime. Not even close. Lots of crimes have a benefactor. Like what? I mean, if you evade paying your taxes, you benefit. <laughs> if you rob a bank, you know, you don't get caught, you benefit. There's very few crimes that are like two victims, you know, the, the perpetrator and the victim. I mean, that dude who got arrested for murder after he uh, responded to an ad on Craigslist asking for someone to murder him and then eat his you know what? That one's probably that one's probably a double victim crime. Yeah, the German guy. I love how everybody knows that he's German. <laughs> no! Wait, we're still fine? Oh my, oh, you piece of junk. I could have destroyed you. Like, nobody knows the names of the victims or anything else that, like, was involved with the case whatsoever. Everybody knows. It's like, oh, that dude from Germany? The tire is reduced to nothing now? It's not like I'm going to stop the tire from leaking, bro. Like, once it's out of air, it's out of air. I'm not going to, like, dry, let my wife drive to the daycare with my finger plug in the hole. I simply can't be defeated, okay? Bro, what is up with the stallers? No, I get that this is a, a high-octane ranked experience, but still... Holy! <laughs> they waited for you? No, I appreciate it if that's the case, which I don't think it is. But if it is, then I appreciate it. Don't wait for me. Top three. I can't believe it. We're going to get ranking points. Uh, after this, it, it might take me an hour to, to get the wheels in motion, pun intended, to, to solve this problem. So uh, I will probably go offline and then come back on once uh, once it becomes clear how we're going to fix this. 
But first, I mean, I'm gonna play this one out. <laughs> We're still alive. Combine the Mies? Not yet. It's not the right time yet. It's not the right time yet! <laughs> oh. It's called who can survive. It's not called who can not waste as much money in the shop as possible. They're running. They're, see, they, there's equality starting to, to aim for the counterplay here. And I got to say, I respect it. I respect it. They're going for a, a 112 Scorpion up at the front. But we got coconut armor. Nice Evolve shirt. Thank you, Banal. I knew someone would figure it out. Oh, baby. They got two scorpions? Is this allowed? Oh, it's allowed. It's allowed and it's fabulous. Can you guys just be like, can one of you get eliminated so I can at least guarantee that I come in second? We don't even need, uh, more HP is always good. We need stakes. I, I would settle for this if I have to. Not necessary. Really want to see a steak. A taco is fine too. Okay. It is what it is. I lost a three scorps. It was crazy. All I'm saying, I'm a top 5% gamer. There's, um, I don't know, 5,000 people in chat. There's 1,000 people telling me I made the wrong decision. That doesn't make sense. That's 20% of chat. And I'm better than 95% of people playing this game. So you have to admit something that's going to be flattering to me. You have to admit either you're wrong or you have to admit um, that the people who watch my sap stream are better than the average sap player. Which is flattering to me to begin with, okay? Me to choo choosing the button, bailing out the banks, uh, making uh, groceries affordable for the populace. What the fuck? Okay, you got me. <laughs> I'll settle for third, 1564, and we've unlocked the dungeon. Okay, I'm gonna say slash marker sap, and I'm going to um, I'm gonna go offline until we figure out what we're doing with this flat tire, and I'll see you next time. See, you, hopefully I'll be back in like an hour. See you then. Two hours later. Hello gamers, we're back. Can I tell you something? Uh, this is, uh, it's crazy. I don't want to insult my own country, but yesterday when I was putting out my recycling bins, my neighbor came out and she just moved to Canada from Taiwan. And she was like, how long did it take you to get your recycling bins? And I was like, I don't know. It took us like a couple of weeks. And then she was like a couple of weeks. Like we've been waiting three months for our recycling bins. And then she said in Taiwan, it wouldn't fly like that. Like if you call somebody and you say like, I have a problem, they will be at your house in like two hours, maybe like a day or two. So she said also she had like a problem with her windows. She called around the window places and every window place was like, oh, we're really busy right now. We're short staffed. We don't have like, uh, we don't have people. It could be two weeks, could be a month and a half, et cetera, et cetera. And I was like, you know what? I, because we've been dealing with a lot of home repairs, contractors, et cetera, et cetera. I related to her and I told her that my wife said the same thing about, you know, in Korea. She's like, in Korea, if you need somebody to like come and repair some glass, they're at your house in like two hours. In Vancouver, you want somebody to repair your glass? It takes like, uh, uh, we don't really know if we're going to be there, blah, blah. Anyway, long story short, I related to her, which is why I'm so impressed that I called a tire company. They drove to our house took our tire off, pulled out the screw that we had apparently driven over, patched it, sealed it, tested it, and uh, remounted it on the car in less than, I would say it took about an hour and a half total from the, from the time that I called them. And the total price was $38 Canadian, which seems unfathomable to me. That is approximately the price of like lunch for two people at a normal place, <laughs> at like an average place. How? I don't know, man. Well, I will say, so we have BCAA, which is like AAA, but for our province. So we pay like a monthly premium to get assistance like this. And this is the first time we've ever dealt with it. 
But still, it was like, I mean, the BCAA is like $14 a month. And it's like if your car explodes, they'll, I don't know, put you back together or something. Seems like a bargain. Plus, if you have BCAA, you get a discount when you buy some stuff. I bought Canucks tickets once, put in my BCAA number, and they were like, oh, here's 70 bucks off. And then one time I parked at the airport, and they were like, do you have a BCAA number? And I said, let me go check. I got them the BCAA number, and it was like 50 bucks off for a week of parking. So like the insurance is already paid for itself, much less the tire repair. Hello, Daniel. Hello. I'm I, Daniel, I don't know, because we were, you were telling that story about the Home Depot where you, everybody in the Home Depot was on their phone and you said, I guess I'll come back when you guys aren't busy. That's been my experience. I'm not hating on the workers for the record, but that's my experience trying to get service for anything in Canada for like the last three and a half years. Wife says, hey, we got a flat tire. Call the insurance company. They had a van at our house within half an hour. Took about half an hour to repair the tire. Total cost, $36. It's crazy. And the dude was super nice about it. I'm like, I, I, I need to give this company and service like a five-star review. I literally thought they were going to be like, it'll be, oh, well, we're really busy right now. It'll be, we could probably get someone there. I'd like, well, I don't know. Maybe because we closed at five today. I thought it would, might be with us later. No, they were like, we're, we're on it. Skirt. Then they also said like, sorry that happened to you. And I was like, damn, I'm not used to this level of, of service. <laughs> what is this Aiden Ross trending on Twitter? Kick is trying to get Aiden Ross to interview Kim Jong-un. Is that for real? Is that going to go down? Fake? <laughs> I probably... <laughs> anyway, okay. Flash marker, sap, ranked. We are so back. The tires fixed. No anecdotes, really. Just having conversations. Start me up. I'm ready to go. Oh, okay. It's going to be a lobby full of stream snipers. Listen, I'm not playing against Tire Popper 447 when I just had to... <laughs> well, I didn't fix the tire, but I had to call somebody to get it fixed. <laughs> tire Popper 447? That can't be real, right? Also, so I, I, I... Either myself or my wife drove over a screw. And that's what popped our tire, apparently, or at least caused the leak. First off, can I just say big ups to... Continental, who I think makes our tires. I thought, or let me rephrase, I would have thought if you drove over a tire, your tire would, or you drove over a screw, your tire would have exploded and then you would have died in a horrific rollover on the highway or something like that. Instead, you can kind of drive on it for like a little bit and then it just slowly leaked out like overnight. So I don't know if it's like tire science or something that has, that has led to that. But I appreciate it nonetheless, don't get me wrong. But also, who can I sue, right? Because like, I mean, I get that it was only $36 to repair the tire, but like that was my $36. Like, can't I screw the, can't I sue the manufacturer of the screw? Like if Coca-Cola has to pay a little bit of extra tax on each sale because of the fact that there's an obesity epidemic, like shouldn't, Brafasco have to pay me because I drove over one of their screws? They're gonna sue you because you stole a screw. That's one way to think about it. Now, I'm sorry to do this. I have to close the game. Or do I? Did they fix it? <laughs> I have to close the game so I can see my new rank. Now, I know you're gonna be like, why would you do that? Well, because at some point we're gonna peak. I want to I want to have a screenshot of my peak because it may never be that good again. It's like how people always make sure they get a photo taken of themselves at a wedding because they, you know, did a juice cleanse to lose 10 pounds and they're, you know, they're wearing nice clothes and they got makeup on and the lighting's right and, you know, blah, blah, blah. It's either that or a picture of you on a boat holding a fish, right? Okay. Okay. Top, I'll stay top 2% sounds great to me, brother. Aren't weddings like a two to three times a lifetime sort of thing? What? I mean, like your wedding, probably. But like going to a wedding? I mean, for me, yeah, but that's because I've got a derelict social network. And then the friends that I do have are all millennials. So they're like, I don't believe in the institution of marriage. But like if you're a certain age, you know. <laughs> 
I think you could dream a little bigger than that. I think that's like, and this is not toxic, or not meant to be toxic in the slightest. I think that's like, um, I'm gonna call it cousin difference. Like when Josh goes to more weddings than anybody I've ever met, um, I think it's because every, every time I ask him whose wedding it, it is, it's always a cousin. Like he has a brother, but I think his dad has a few siblings and his mom has a few siblings. And they, on average, had like two to three kids each. So all of a sudden, you know, you're sitting at like 12 cousins or something like that. And they tend to be around the same age. I'm an only child. I have like five cousins total. You shouldn't call it that, though. Why not? Cousin is just cousin difference. It makes perfect sense. If you got a problem with that, you got to look inside of yourself, quite frankly. I'm an only child. I have six cousins. I mean, I'm... Listen, I don't even control how many times my parents do it. I'm not going to deign to tell my dad's brother how many kids he should have. Actually, I have way more than six cousins. I'm just, I should note I'm estranged from like my mom's side of the family, one generation up from my mom. So I actually probably have like 11 cousins, <laughs> but I, have <laughs> I haven't seen five or six of them in like 16 years. Didn't you say you were conceived via back shots? Listen, you probably don't even want to get into it, so I don't know why you're bringing it up. I'm a, I'm a simple man. I'm a simple man. I think a, a toucan for a couple rounds to extend though your garlic is good, as long as you don't run into raccoons. You might. You might. That's the way you play. You really aren't a simple man, I reckon. I think I'm, honestly, I think I'm a simple man. With God as my witness, I, I think that I am, uh, I'm, I, I can't say I'm as simple as you are because I don't know who you are. But I, I mostly just, I love eating. I put my pants on one leg at a time, just like anybody. What you just said is insulting. I know, that's why I, that's why I said it. Um, run it back here. Eating puss. So true. I just love eating. Eating pussy. <laughs> oh, a good one. Gen Z be like, mm, don't you mean eating ass? Come on, mix it up a little. <laughs> that doesn't really make any sense. Oh, man. You wouldn't eat ass? I don't know, man. I am, listen, it's not... That area has no appeal for me personally. If you're into it, by all means, I would say that my admiration for the posterior, it ends at the cheeks. Always admire the cheeks. Maybe it's just because I had a brush with death due to, you know, two different forms of malevolent bacteria colonizing almost my entire body. My shins almost rotted off of my fucking legs. The actual anus itself, it just... On my end... Admittedly, I've only had a colonoscopy, otherwise no experimentation. It did not awaken anything in me. Not that that would necessarily, it's probably a boomer take to assume that it had a chance to. Um, I'm sure that it's probably a different sensation than having someone shove a camera up your anus. But regardless, didn't really do that much for me. And then secondarily... Um, on the the on my partner's end, pun intended. I don't know. The hole itself just doesn't appeal to me that much. It's the risk reward is <laughs> is not right. <laughs> you know, babies come out the other hole, right? Yeah, but the baby is sterile until it reaches Earth. Nothing that comes out of the other end is sterile at any point. Thoughts on New York banning Airbnbs? Extremely, I'm very thrilled <laughs> for, for New Yorkers. They're not banning them, right? They, they added a rule that I think is genius. Isn't the rule like you can run an Airbnb, but you have to occupy the same residence as the, uh, as the person that's a guest the whole time? So it takes it, Airbnb can still exist, but you have to bring it back to brass tacks, which is like when you let someone sleep in your extra bedroom and then you took them to the Capilano suspension bridge in the morning. 
and only two people at a time. It's instead of like buying a, a house and then turning it into a hotel, your ass basically just earned yourself a roommate. Holy cow, we're so back. We're back to couch surfing. Why does everyone hate Airbnb? There's a couple of reasons, and I'm, th this is in good faith, okay? One is that it has contributed to the meteoric rise of the housing market by drastically reducing the available supply. Ergo, with, even if demand stays constant, prices increase. The other reason as a consumer is that Airbnb was goaded with the sauce for like eight years and then it got commoditized and turned into like a, um, I don't know, like an influencer type career. So people would just leverage up to the fucking gills and get like 15 mortgages and have 14 Airbnbs and then like a little house that they live in themselves. And then it became worse than a hotel because it was just a hotel with no staff where you had to clean it yourself and then you usually got dinged with like a, an enormous cleaning fee afterwards, even if you tidied up. Like we made the decision maybe like two or three years ago to just go back to hotels. Cause like for a while, Airbnbs were crazy good. They were cheaper than hotels, larger. You had a kitchen, two bathrooms, maybe a washer and dryer. It was really nice. Now, there were some costs you paid. You had to deal with some insane hosts. And sometimes the locations were not central relative to, you know, where you wanted to be. But it was good, right? Probably still destroying the housing market. But at least the service was juiced, right? Eventually, we got to the point where, like, we're paying way more than a hotel. It's outside of, like, the entertainment district of the city. And then, like, every host is like, um, you left, like, a half-open water bottle in the fridge. That'll be $70 to clean. And we were like, okay, well, enjoy fucking getting foreclosed on, I guess. is like... You know, I, I think that they, they did my personal opinion with the hosts. I get that they're running a business, but at the same time, I, I feel like the hosts didn't realize how good they had it. And they started bending people over the barrel. And that's that's where I fell out of love with with the Airbnb experience for sure. Airbnb was never good. I had some good Airbnb experiences. For some Paxes, when, you know, it was between $1,500 for four days to stay at, like, the Comfort Inn in a little room that smelled like it was cleaned with apple cider vinegar versus, like, a 1,500-square-foot apartment that had five bedrooms in it. Like, that was sick. <laughs> but things that, that didn't last forever, it, things changed. How many hidden cameras did it have? I don't know. What, you ever hear the expression, what, what daddy don't know won't hurt him? Back when Ubers were five bucks. So true. As Chibli would say, yerp. And now you look great today. Don't lie to me. I only had time to do... I know I look busted. I only had time to do 90 minutes on the Peloton instead of 120 minutes. And then a chatter beat me by three kilojoules over the course of an hour and a half. It's Heather Graham from Anger Management. I know, why don't you just say I'm a fatty? Why don't, say, why don't you have some more chocolate cake, you pig? Did D. Kelly beat you? Wow! Um, well, here's the thing, okay? First ride, D. Kelly beat me by like, I don't know, 10, 10 kilojoules. But I didn't even know we were racing because I only saw that they were hashtag the egg carton like nine minutes into the ride. And plus, the first ride is always like I'm, I'm easing myself into it. I'm not making excuses. It's just my output tends to go like, you know. Then, uh, second ride, I set a new personal best for myself. And I beat D. Kelly by like 16 kilojoules. And then on the last ride, which we were in at exactly the same time, uh, my, I was fucking gassed from going. So I didn't think they would join me for the third one. So I went all out. <laughs> and then on the third ride, I was a little winded. A li legs were a little sore. I still put out like a 207 watt average for 30 minutes, but they beat me by like 20 watts. So they, they, got, me by, they got me by a bit. And I, honestly, they, de they deserved to because they, they were doing good work. I also think that if I had pushed a little harder, they also would have pushed a little harder. So I don't think that it was just like, oh, I, I left a little on the table. 
I think if I, if I started encroaching, I think they would have found another gear as well. You gotta realize, I'm fighting for my life every day. Like not every day can be like a boss fight, right? Like there's supposed to be some days that are like easy training. I log on, I think it's gonna be easy training and then all of a sudden, six members of the egg card and give me a high five and I'm like, all right, motherfuckers, here we go. My dude is ignoring the 80-20 rule big time. Ass eating enjoyer, 89, holy cow. Well, like here's the thing with the 80-20 rule. It's like I understand in principle, you know, you should have like, um, you should have training and then you should have races, you know? You should have, let me be like a, a leaking pumpkin. It's seasonal. Um, you should focus on your training and then go hard on race day, you know? But here's the problem with the 80-20 rule. What if you're doing 80-20 and then the person that is your competitor is doing 100-0 or 0-100? Your ass is getting cooked. <laughs> You're getting, and you might be getting cooked by yours truly. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Oh, we win these. Then they blow out an O-ring. Fair enough. I mean, my knees were starting to get a little sore by the end of that 18 minute in Agata De Vida climb. You def need deload cycles. Here's the thing though. What if you, what if that's all made up? What if you need a deload cycle, but I can just go at 110% forever? <laughs> you ever think about what if I'm just built different? What if... He got me, I can't believe it. Chat, he doesn't even recalibrate his bike. DL Guiga, listen, okay? I know we've got a banter-rich environment, okay? All I'm gonna say... Is the, the other three riders who are frequently on the ride and, you know, beat me by 1 to 100 kilojoules on average, they don't seem to have any complaints about the, um, about the calibration of my bike. It's only DL Guiga, who I'm, I'm clearing by 20 to 50 kilojoules every ride, who thinks that my bike is probably miscalibrated, okay? That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. And I've never accused Cosmo Kramer or uh, D David Kelly or Kip Casper of having uncalibrated bikes or miscalibrated bikes. I would never. Librarian has no anonymity. Just because they're not a VIP doesn't mean they're anonymous. I mean, I can see what they're tweeting. Because I like all of their tweets, all of their tweets get served to me. So like every once in a while, it's about me. And I click it and I go, ha 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 ha. And then a lot of the time, it's about um, Fauna, who I have surmised is a, a VTuber, apparently. And then some of the time, <laughs> it's, it's something altogether different. You'd be surprised how many people confu confuse Fauna and Flora. I mean, I myself have done it. You know what I think it is? Is that Flora is like an old woman's name and women are people and people are animals. Ergo, flora sounds like an animal. So whenever I think of flora, I should think of floral, but instead I think of <laughs> how much I respect women. And I hate to say it, but that's causing problems for me. Team Wood Games, can we get an IP ban on high uh, NL you suck? Not just an account ban, but an, an IP ban, please. Because I'm sure that it's probably like a, a, a noted sap player who made a Smurf account using like a, a Proton Mail or something. Uh, let me be like a, but a desperate boogeyman. Bro doesn't know VPNs exist. Paying $12 a month to uh, NordVPN for the rest of my life because I wanted to be a jerk. Did you see that Valve uh, got a phone call from the based police and they decided to permaban all Smurfers for life? That is, that is based, man. It's Dota 2 news. I know. Nobody knows Dota like me. Hey, Mad Dog, thanks, to, thanks again for the gifted subscriptions. Thank you. Ever since they did that, a friend of mine climbed 30 ranks. Well, careful they don't do too good. They might get banned. They didn't just ban the Smurf. They went back and they, they penalized the mains. If Smurfing has one hater, it is me. If Smurfing has no haters, I am dead. 
me trying to remember if I've ever used a Smurf on stream. <laughs> Did you have those honey stinger waffles today? Of course I had three strope waffles before uh, my ride. But I didn't have time to do, to do a hydration break and a refuel after, after my second ride. Yeah, I had three, three is one serving size. Three waffles. I'm, 120 calories total, six grams of fat, 18 grams of carbohydrates, of which nine grams is sugar. Holy cow, 0 0.4 micrograms of iron. That's going to hit. How small are they? I can't show you how small they are because it's going to look like I'm making a 4chan uh, hand gesture into the webcam. But you can just imagine, based on what I just said, how big they are. It might be 120 per, not total. Listen, applesauce for life, no disrespect. I've been reading Canadian nutritional labels since I was fucking eight years old. If ifs and buts were candies and nuts, we'd all have a Merry Christmas, okay? Nutrition facts. Per three waffles. Per three waffles. 25 grams. Calories, 120. Why? Because my ass doesn't want to eat things that don't taste good enough for how bad they are for you. If something is bad for you but tastes amazing, i.e. Hawkins cheesies, then sure, I'll eat the occasional Hawkins cheesy. But if it's something like Dunkaroos, you really think I'm, I'm taking in like eight grams of saturated fat just to eat cookies with shitty icing on them? No shot, bro. No shot. I'll take some good ice cream. Don't get me wrong. Good ice cream, we spend on that. Little Debbie snack cakes and cosmic brownies from the gas station, we skip on that. Before anyone thinks I'm insane to know the name of these waffles, I work in a grocery store. I mean, they're... Listen, I would not recommend eating honey stinger mini waffles unless you're using them as mid-ride or mid-run nutrition. They do be pretty tasty, though. Easily digestible. Pretty light if you had to carry them in a pouch or something if you were actually leaving your house. They're mostly honey. Let me, let me see a deal, Guiga. Most, they're mostly flour and then organic brown rice syrup, then palm oil, then frozen whole eggs, then uh, organic soy flour, sea salt, soy lecithin, baking soda, and organic rice extract. They're actually 0% honey, apparently, which, honest, that means I'm owned because I thought there might be some manuka in here, but apparently not. You thought they were going to put manuka honey in those? I'm just going to be honest with you. I don't even know what manuka honey is. I, I've just heard about it before in my life. <laughs> we'll take those. Would you get a similar yet cheaper benefit by squeezing a teaspoon of honey into your mouth between rides? Okay, listen. v -Kels, you simply have... You happen to be the person who wrote the comment that I saw, okay? Are you an athlete? Are you an Olympian? Are you a cyclist? Do you compete in the international track and field competitions? Do you run ultra marathons? Do you do 5Ks? Listen, because the reason I ask, because you can't min-max in your imagination, okay? No plan survives contact with the enemy. You don't have to, you just start hitting me up with these theoretical, physical, mathematical calculations when we got some experience with the rubber meeting the simulated road, okay? I used to run ultras. It's nice to drink a Coke at the halfway mark. You know what? That is, that is something I had heard. I heard that for um, a lot of endurance athletes, people love uh, a flat Coca-Cola. Why flat? Well, it's easier to drink it fast because it's... Uh, because it's not carbonated. Ah, oh, son of a bitch. <laughs> I just realized all this stuff's going to get unfrozen. Whatever. Whatever. We top half. Fucking get eliminated. Get eliminated. Plus, like, I, I've never been on an ultra marathon, okay? But by the time I finish some of those days with, um, you know, 120 minutes of riding, we really... I mean, they, they built their squad to... Fuck me specifically. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Raccoon to steal our melon and then double scorpion. That's so rude. All I'm going to say is that you are unconcerned about taste once you reach that point. All you are concerned with is, um, is survival. And the sequel, Survival Goes West. 
Like there, before I started eating a little bit before rides and I was doing just idiotic 90 minutes of like fasted cardio in the morning right after I woke up, by the end of those rides, I was just, your brain starts to fantasize about shit that you don't even like. It'll be like 6.42 in the morning. My, my brain is like, I would fucking kill for a handful of Skittles right now. Holy shit. It would be crazy. <laughs> Oh my God, I would fucking go nuts just to have like a, a pack of Raisinets next to me or something like that. Going upstairs and shoving these weird Serbian chocolate bars that our old daycare gave to my daughter into my mouth. You guys ever eat bananica? Bananinica? Bananica? Did you get the right cucumbers yet? Well, I bought another cucumber and I sent my wife uh, with it to the daycare and it didn't come back. Now the kicker is that it was basically, it was the exact same species of cucumber that she took, she gave me to take to the daycare, but it was just greener. It was, looked exactly the same, it was just more verdant. And uh, I guess that's fine. I guess, I guess she decided it being greener was, was the difference. Please. Yes! I got fine. I'll do it myself. <laughs> oh, sorry, Dysack. Sorry, you got. I'm he in his mood. He in his mood. Okay. Hold on for one more day. Who's only gonna get it? When I gonna gonna get it? Gonna give it to me? Okay, no moose power this time. That's unfortunate. Let me see what we're dealing with. Okay, we got it. We got a freaking raccoon. Raccoon Double Scorpion is our next build. Whole oh, okay. Well, you know what? I'll just level with you. That's like uh, kind of fucked. Okay. Sorry, my team is annoying. Lull. <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> This is this is my Olympics, okay? Just don't insult me for putting the black screen up. You really think I'm gonna I'm gonna lose self control and I'm not gonna throw it up? Uh, oh, I can't have any dead air. I'm gonna throw it up early. Okay, you know what? Here you go. You get a little bit of this. Okay, get print screen ready. Is that enough for you? <laughs> I still don't know. I mean, I know I beat them last time. I don't know if I can beat Young Llama's team, quite frankly. I'm looking at their team and I'm, I'm thinking that their team looks mighty scary. But let's, let's let God sort it out. Yeah, okay, you got me on this one. Good placement, kid. Good placement. Oh, we were not that far off, but good placement. I should be going up against Clone Andy this time. We take those. <clears throat> I just have to be honest with you. I'm ha very happy with that we're going to be in second place here. Maybe we could even get the first. Can I throw th something insane at y'all? I hope, I hope you said yes, because I'm going to do it anyway. It's not insane discourse. It's insane gameplay. I didn't think about the order at all, but I'm running Ox up front because I'm not letting him steal my melon. I'd rather ha we have no melons than he gets to steal my melon. You really think I'm going to let you steal my melon, brother? Oh, I think we're cooked no matter what. Good game. Good game. He was stealing something. He had a raccoon and everybody on my squad had equipment. Who's the most famous Andy in the world? Living or, or ever? So you you got to put some respect on... Uh, Andy Kaufman in a wrestling match. Yeah, 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 yeah. That one's for you, uh, REM poster. You got to put some respect on um, Andy Roddick, former tennis pro. Andy Warhol, very true. 
Very true. Andy Warhol. Many people are saying this. Andy Samberg might be the most famous. Yes. Yes. Delightful and also likely true. I go Warhol over Samberg. It's a tough decision. I'm glad I'm not the one in the room when the decision's being made, okay? I don't want to be the one in the arena. Holy cow, we won. You really think Warhol clears Sandberg? I mean, I'm sure Warhol's done some good art, like uh, painting cans of soup or like boxes of laundry detergent or whatever, and then throwing sick parties in Manhattan. But he's never made a piece of art like Hot Rod or Palm Springs. He's not even the most famous Sandberg. I think he's the most famous Sandberg. I personally can't think of a more famous Sandberg. Alexandy the Great. Now he might he might clear Andy Sandberg. How many celebrity Ryans do you clear? In terms of popularity? Literally zero. <laughs> if they're celebrities. I would say I'm about as unfamous as you can be and still be considered a celebrity. It's an unfortunate name. What's wrong? Ryan's a perfectly fine name, in my opinion. The only thing about it is I do feel like it's kind of a product of its time. At least in North America, you don't hear about many Ryans like pre-1900. And I feel like people stopped naming their kids Ryan in like the year 2002. So like eventually, I, I, my theory for my own name is that it's gonna be like a Bertha or a, a Muriel type situation where like the only, like kids that are 70 years younger than me are gonna be like, imagine having, hi Ryan, hi, how are you today? The same way we're like, imagine your name is fucking Winifred. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Kid from high school named Ryan married a girl named Ryan. No, I'm not making this up. That is, I mean, sharing last names can sometimes be confusing enough, but sharing first names, man, holy cow. Hey, I, this is a genuine question. You know how uh, when, well, traditionally here, when people get married, the woman takes the man's last name. Sometimes they take a hyphenated name. They become, they go from Jan Levinson to Jan Levinson Gould. Does the husband also go hyphenated? Or is it, does he not go hyphenated? Or is it dealer's choice? Dealer's choice. Second question, what is dealer's choice? <laughs> some do, some don't. I mean, I feel like I would, I think I would take the hyphen. Because I feel like it's just, Wow, it's a tough decision, actually, now that I think about it. Because a hyphenated name, I, I think it, it just seems more traditional for both spouses to have the same last name. Whether that's my last name, my wife's last name, or we both, we share the load and have a hyphenated last name, that sounds, either one is fine with me. But then I'm also, I bet having a hyphenated last name, it might not be anymore, but I bet for a long time, that shit like ruined web forms, right? Be one of those situations where you'd be like, oh, you can just do it online. And then you'd like try to type in your hyphenated last name and it would be like, please call this number right now. Please, please don't use special characters in your last name, such as hyphens or anything with an exante goo on it. Okay, we love this. This is, this is the great pivoting. You're already chilling. You're all gone. This is the, even if you run partially squatted, this is where your pivot has to take place. Can't do it. I can't, I'm, I'm sorry, I can't do it. I can't do it. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay, partially squatted. This is gonna strike you as insane. I don't want you. Okay. I think we run scorpions second. What's my methodology? Opponents who get scorpions will put them first. We'll blow out their scorpion with our coconut armor and then use their 
feed on their good units with our scorpion, and then the boar goes sicko mode. Nonetheless, a lot of people are saying, can you play a real game? Gamers, I get that you're making a joke. The main problem is that it's not funny. The second part is that you're doing it from an indefensible position. What is a real game? League of Legends, where you as a fucking hot wizard stand uh, behind a wall of little monsters, and you're, you, you stand there and go, a tick, 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 not attacking anything, even though there's obviously monsters coming for your base. Tick, 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 boom, I got the last hit. My kill, my kill. Tick, 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 boom, I got it, I got it. No, someone else on my team killed a monster that I was supposed to kill. That's gonna affect my ability to generate gold by 0.75% cumulatively for the rest of the game. It's gonna slow down my ability to get a battle fury. I rage, I hate you, I hate you, I hate you, I hate you, I quit, everybody. That's a real game? That's a waste of your one life on planet Earth, brother. Get real. We need a little more. Oh, break another little piece of my heart now, baby. Now, now, for order-based purposes. We just, we went gooseful. Then we went up against Nick. Okay. It's likely to be you. I think we're gonna run that. And then I think, I think we have to, we have to, we have to keep you honest on that one. I, I'm not, I, I can't show you the screen yet. We got 48 seconds. If you commit, I'll show you the screen. I can't see your screen. So why should you be able to see my screen? We are top four though. ELO guaranteed. <laughs> I like how serious you take in this. I'm, this is the only game I've ever had a chance like this, man. Oh, they, they, they soul read me. No! Oh! Bald Canadian father, I think your order was perfect. I think my snake literally just, what can I say? Get a better overlay for blocking the order. It's never enough. Nothing on the wall behind you. Okay, we put up some shelves. Now everyone's like, oh, there's nothing on the damn shelves. See, we got a lot of moving parts over here at the headquarters, okay? Like, we're getting to it when we can get to it. I'm getting up at 5.20 a.m. every single day. I got a lot of stuff I'm knocking off the to-do list day in, day out. Sorry, I was genuinely... I was thinking. <laughs> like... Like my life depends on it. I'm not just going gentle into that good night. I, I puzzled through the steps. Maybe I made a mistake or maybe they'll make a strategic change. But this is, this is how I chose to run it. Oh, okay. Okay, okay, we're so back. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> You would do this, which means I'm going to do that. <laughs> and then you're going to run the same behind it. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Roll it. Roll it. Send it. I'm ready. This is a counter pick. Oh, good play. <laughs> I think you just bought cheese and beat it. Beat me. <laughs> Good game, good game. All of that strategy got beaten by one cheese. There's a GG though, we say GG on those. Oh! <laughs> Have you ever seen a more validating screenshot than this? Listen, I get that there's, uh, there's, I don't think they show top 0% because I saw a screenshot of somebody on the Super Auto Pet subreddit who hit number one on the leaderboard and it still said top 1%. So the only thing you can shoot for is being in the top 10, but that feels amazing. <laughs> Windows Shift S. Into the Discord bragging. No, but people are just going to say, great job, Grandpa, whatever. Where are you? I'm not on the list, but I am in the top 10%. Which means there's at least a thousand people playing this. Because the top 10 are 1% of... You get it.
That's how we dodge. <laughs> no! It's a world number two dropout streams. No, no, no. <laughs> it's just so fucked. I abandoned. I can't abandon. They should let you abandon. I just hope we both have fun. Listen, I, I, you know what I hate is when you're better than somebody in something, but you're only better by like 10%. And then they roll over and show their belly. Oh, I can't believe our misfortune that we've been paired with you. Oh, this is so horrible. I never stand a chance. Well, good luck, guys. It was fun while it lasted. Like, I, I hate that stuff so much. And this. So, like, we, I got a chance. It's Super Auto Pets, man. So, I, I'm just saying I'm not going to be that guy. Okay, that's just an insane team, honestly. I'm not gonna be that guy that is like, oh, well, I never stood a chance to begin with. Like, if you beat me, you beat me. Let's, let's let it ride here. Also, there's lots of other people in the game. You don't have to come in first. It would be nice, but we don't have to come in first. Mighty interesting. Why don't you take some support here? Now, I mean, I'm still, no, 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 no. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can I run? No, no, no. Just take garlic. You know, you know, garlic is the secret sauce, man. You use it in everything. So I'm losing. I'm getting too in the. You know, this is Mozart on his deathbed going. Oh, is it? And then the clarinets come in. And then the drums go boom, 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 boom. And Salieri's like, slow down. Slow the fuck down. So, bro, I felt. Slow, 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 slow the fuck down. And Mozart, the horns come in. Salieri's like, fuck, how's this guy so fucking smart? He's just coming out of it. I, every single Salieri song is like any sorry you ever see Amadeus insane harpsichord impression <laughs> what can I say do 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 it's the golden saucer theme I think I think you're at a dead end, my good friend. Me when I'm in a Wes Anderson AI. Chat GPT and Mid Journey team up to do a Wes. What if Wes Anderson made a Final Fantasy VII movie? Squeeb diddle dee diddle dee diddle dee diddle dee deep deep deep. It's just a fucking fucked up half android Scarlett Johansson in the middle of a frame with Adrian Brody standing behind her. Well, that awful song plays. It's not an awful song, for the record. It's simply my rendition of it. The re the rendition that I get, the impression that I get. Sorry, I'm losing officially losing my mind. You got me on this game. I'm cooked right now. Drop out. We don't do that. We don't. Oh, I didn't get my capybara early. We don't do that. You stay in the fight, soldier. Shansha. Shamsha. Chaos isn't a pit. It isn't a ladder either. It's a, it's a depressed cockroach, Shamsha. Which is what you resemble. In your human-sized bed. Despite being a gargantuan arthropod. Not bad. I used I used to have a, a, a saucier one, but I it's gone to the, the ravages of time. Herzog? I well that was supposed to be Peter Baelish, aka Littlefinger. I I would love to have a good Herzog, but I'm no Paul F. Tompkins. Like a good Werner Herzog impression is is amazing because no matter what you say in the voice, is it's always hilarious. Whether the dude is talking about, like, packing yourself into an ice bed in Antarctica so you can survive. It's ironic. The only way to survive the cold is to become the snowman. And or he's saying, you know, I want to see the baby. You know, like, I'm still, we're not quite there yet. We're working on it. I'm not working on it at all. The fuck is this? Okay, I, you were cooking on that one. You, I, I, I haven't seen that one taking a big uh, bite out of the meta, but you, I understand you are on lethal. You got to do something. What's the otter doing now? Okay, smartass. Why don't I sell the otter then and keep the bison around? Oh, wait, I don't have a fucking tier three. Bozo. 
You're talking to a top 1% weekly SAP gamer, okay? Sell both. Now you're talking, actually. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> Hang on, they're cooking? They're cooking? You're absolutely right. I sell, I purchase, and then you start soaking up some buffs and, and, and stealing some sunshine here. I'm gonna run a slightly atypical squad here. Because I'm worried about the other raccoon that we're going up against. Now you can have your phone and eat it too. Just a, it's just a better team right now. Just a better team right now, drop out. But I, I have a feeling we're going to be seeing a lot of each other in the future. If I go up against my opponent's raccoon, he steals my death touch, kills my scorpion, and then he steals my nothing, and then I steal his death touch. And I go bam, 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 and I, I run him down because his attack is going to be higher than mine. Hey, are you, are you supposed to be locked in when I'm talking about this stuff, Judge? Judge? All right, well, you know what? We're not going up against them anyway. And we stole your croissant. Okay, two life. That's scary. This is really bad. Also, can I just say... My squad is good. Maybe minus the raccoon, which was an, an interesting choice. But for turn 13, our squad is kind of crazy. You're not supposed to freeze the tier ones. <laughs> I don't know who I want to go up against, man. Hang on, I'm, <laughs> I'm thinking, I'm thinking. I did change something, but it, we have to get the counter pick. We did not get the counter pick. I'm scared. I'm scared. It's the greatest raccoon fizzle of my life. I came in fifth. That's crazy, man. I know, right? Like, all I, it, listen, above all else, good game. But thank you for calling uh, dropout streams on their BS. You wait like three rounds in. You got me cooked this time. Oh, rip, we go next. That's why I said we don't do that around here. We respect that everybody's doing their best at all times. Be like an exported legend, like I'm a tradal expert. I really did have a terrible start. I just got super lucky on the skunks. Dropout games, like going into the, the final exam with a, a 4.0, 100% average in the course. I'm so nervous for the exam. At the end of the exam, how do you think you did? Uh, I think I did okay. Two weeks later, the exam gets handed back. And remarkable, Dropout Streams got uh, a perfect score on the exam. They got every question right, including the extra credit questions. Oh, geez, are you sure? There must have been some mistake. I see right through that, okay? I understand why you would do it, because why wouldn't you? It's always better to project a lack of power and then get underestimated and come over top and bring the hammer down. If you were like, yeah, I studied a long time, the person that was one class rank behind you might be like, oh shit, I better buckle down. But if instead you're like, I didn't study at all, they're going to be like, all right, I'm going to spend all night playing NBA 2K. And all of it, as a result of that, you clear them easy. You win valedictorian. School isn't competitive, though. Come on. How many, how many full scholarships are they given out at your school? How many people are winning the $500 Radio Shack gift certificate for having the highest mark in grade 12 computer class? <laughs> they only give a Radio Shack only dropped off one gift certificate, brother. I worked at a Radio Shack for a while. I used to smoke meth in the bathroom. I sold the hell of cell phones. It's one of the funniest comments I've ever uh, read in my entire life. <laughs> Just trying to picture it like the only person I know that was excited to shop at Radio Shack was like my 68 year old grandfather who would always go in and buy like some fucked up circuit board that you could only get there. It was like a fastener that was made for one particular type of electrical engineering 
process. He'd search through like an enormous plastic bin until he found one, and then you're, you're the dude helping him. Society is so funny, man. I'm not even... Genuinely, I, you, you might believe me or disbelieve me, and either way is fine. I've been thinking about that. I'm like, what percentage of people that I encounter on a day-to-day -day basis are under the influence of something? And I honestly, th and society functions relatively well in spite of this, okay? But it's got to be like minimum 5 to 10%, right? No, n not counting caffeine. Caffeine isn't something. Guys, come on. And don't, don't say, oh, I... Oh, smoking a, out of my dab rig in the morning is like just drinking a cup of cold brew for you. No, it's not. You've blown out your, your GABA sensitivity in your brain, okay? And it's fine as long as it's after work and before you hop in your car. <laughs> a five milligram edible shouldn't count either then? I completely agree. I mean, if you consume so much weed that like you can eat an edible and not sense the highness, then I don't consider you to be part of the sample set. I'm not saying from like a legal standpoint you should drive. I'm just saying if you're scanning my shit at the grocery store and you, you know, you smoke 500, what's, well, you smoke half a gram of weed a day and you took like a little corner off a of brownie at lunch, I'm sure your ass is probably better now than you were in the morning. I'm talking about, you ever wonder like when you're outside and you're just walking around, like how many people do you run into that are like 12 beers deep? I bet it's more than you think. <laughs> I don't think it's 25%, but I bet it's like, I bet it's five to 10, especially with like the legalization of weed. <clears throat> Can you talk about the fact that your family has to use the bathroom before going anywhere or anywhere? I know my wife was talking about it on stream yesterday, but like, yes, I, and that's where I learned it. My family, before we go outside anywhere, um, typically, all three members of my family, myself included, will go pee. No, not as a group, obviously. I always feel like that's smart. Because as much as it can be annoying to be like about to leave somewhere and then someone's like, oh, I just have to go pee first. At least it's less annoying than being out somewhere and having someone go, oh, hang on, let's wait, I have to find a bathroom, oh, we're in the car, like, well, let's pull over to, like, a rest stop somewhere, you know, yada, yada, yada. I'm, I'm yadaing the yadas here. Greatest placement of all time? So I'm, I'm not trying to say that everybody has to pee before they go outside. Like, I, I would say, to thine own self be true. In that situation, if you know yourself and you're like, I never need to pee out of the house, like, I'm... I'm a camel, then more power to you. Straight up. For me personally, I'm a peer. So I, I, I try to make my piss my own problem and not anybody else's problem. We're so close to finishing with like positive value today, man. <laughs> okay, fine. You've justified your existence. Thank you. Now, let me think about this. Who did we just go up against? Monbazu, please. Oh. I bet I'm going to be playing against Mon Bazu, please. Please tell me that they're not sniping. <laughs> if you lose, we have to play Mon Bazu? No, because like this doesn't, this asymmetric. People are like, come on, you won't lose. Yeah, but what if I do? Secondly, I can't give everybody something if they beat me. Because you guys don't give me any. Well, actually, that's not true. Like some of the people we were in lobbies with did drop five gifted subscriptions after playing. But still! I don't want to! Huge, huge, huge gameplay. Huge gameplay. We're in the top half, baby. Go ahead, steal my steak. Top three, top two! <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. I mean, it's that we got a.
Lock in, lock in. Don't be a coward, lock in. I'm already done, lock in. You lock in, then I lock in. You lock in first! So, okay, we're in this for the long haul, huh? Holy cow, did, wait, when did you get a lionfish? Last round? I didn't know that. Yes! <laughs> Dude, that was a good round, too. Good games, good games, firm handshakes. 1595. Oh! <laughs> and the Doberman, man! Hey, Rip, Bazu, good game, good, g thank you for the gifted subscriptions, a good game, good game. I'm learning every, I'm cross-referencing the usernames to the, the chat names, too. Love to see that. Okay, slash marker me. I, I have bad news, I won't be live tomorrow. Oh, is it Canada Day? Shut up! My wife's getting surgery. She's getting their wisdom teeth taken out, so it's not like a serious one, but it, because it's medical, I can say that it's surgery, and then you have to feel bad about yourself because I'm being a good husband. Um, let me see if she is ready to stream, though. Hello. Are you ready to stream? Smiley face. That is serious? Yeah, but not for me. I'm just going to be driving around and maybe making some soup. So have a good weekend. I think I will see you on um, Mon Monday seems right. Oh, man, what am I going to do for lunch? Oh, this flat tire screwed up my whole day. I had an appointment after lunch, but I can't go to the appointment with my two-year-old. So I canceled my appointment, but I was also I was going to get lunch next to my appointment. So what the heck am I going to do for lunch? I was going to eat a bunch of slices of bread or something like that. Hey, drop out streams. Thank you as well for the gifted subscriptions. Thank you. Thank you. Much appreciated. Keep, where, where are you at here? Are you... You can, you can pass Obi-Wan Cannabis. Do you end up going up against uh, Obi-Wan Cannabis in like every game? Or do you guys talk to each other on Discord so that you don't uh, queue against each other? Do you, is there like an oligarchy going on there? Is there a, a Super Auto Pets cartel? I always get matched against 1500 and then I only gain 4 ELO for wins. Hey. He's talking about you guys? I'm not 1500, I'm 1595, okay? <laughs> but I think that's what it's like to be on top though. Isn't it like every time Magnus Carlsen plays somebody, it's like if he wins, his ELO goes up two points, and if he loses, it drops like 90. And yet he still climbs? Like, that's, that's crazy. Usually not even two points. That's hard, man. No wonder he feels that if somebody beats him, they use the butt plug. And they might have, for all I know. I'm referencing the drama. I'm not taking a side. Hi, honey. Do you want to come downstairs? Okay, daddy's coming up as I, I will be freed in a moment. I will be upstairs momentarily. Okay, she is live. Okay, I'm coming. I just give me eight seconds. I just need eight seconds. Chibli, Chibli, Bo Katan with the dark saber, Chibli. Ryan denies that his family bathroom habits. Or strange? <laughs> Wait, you guys asked? Did you ask my husband? Of course he's not gonna say yes, my family's bathroom habits are weird. That's what they've been... That's his life. His life has been like that. His whole life was like, oh, we're gonna go out for a coffee. Be right back in two minutes. Hold on, hold on. I gotta go use the potty. And then... And then it's like a real re relay of potty. You go potty, I go potty. Well, I guess I shouldn't say potty, because <laughs> they're they're not little kids. Um, I'm I'm very used to saying potty right now. I can I'm sure you know why. I'm sure you can assume why. You go potty. What was that song? You go potty, I go potty. Pop party, doo doo doo. 
You go party, I go party. Do, 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 do. <laughs> you guys know the song? <laughs> My daughter watches a video <laughs> and plays that song. You go party, I go party. Do, do, do. Do, do, do. You go party, I go party. Do, do, do. Wait, the, the words are missing. Party rock is in the house tonight. No, it's. I think some words are missing. Oh man, and then we got our tires changed. Oh my god. Did, did you tell them the horror story? That, that my wife almost uh, died? There's a big husband and wife difference. When I told the story, I was like, oh my god. The guy got here so fast, he fixed the tires so nicely, it was so cheap. The wife version is, we almost exploded. <laughs> Cause you weren't in the car. Well, last night he came. He came home and he said, "Oh, we had a flat tire, but that's okay." I went to the gas station. She's, I'm, I'm getting roasted. Just that's what by, you said. No, no, no. I said I saw an alert that our tire pressure was low, so I got out and checked it, and then. And then you went to the gas station, the gas station and, and then right you close. filled it up. But yeah, but you have to be careful with your addiction. I didn't say I had a flat tire. It was a flat Who tire. Who cares? It wasn't flat when I was driving. <laughs> That's the same thing. So I filled it up so that it was full. And then I put the car in the garage and I said, okay, in the morning, make sure you check it. Because like, I think I fixed it, but it might not be fixed. Yeah. And I said, okay. And then you said, the car will let you know. If it has a flat tire. And I said, okay. So I I got her in. I got my daughter in for the daycare drop off. Saw, looked at it, nothing, no alert. I tried to like look into like, well, I don't know, like different settings to see if it's, if there's actually an alert or whatnot. Nothing, no, no, no nothing. So I was like, okay, we're good. We got out of the garage. Maybe I would say, 20 feet away from our garage the road was really bumpy like it was more bumpy than usual and i was like oh man because <laughs> maybe i mean it was uh i don't know what it is it was really bumpy and then i saw from the back mirror there was a lady she was looking at me and i was looking at her and she was looking at me and she her face was like uh oh uh oh, your car is frigged. That was her face. She, her face, like, uh oh, your car is a little frigged. And I was like, oh no, no. Maybe it's not the road. Maybe it's the flat tire that Ryan was talking about. So I, I got out of the car, looked at the, looked at the tires. That one's good. That one's good. That one's good. And the other one, flat. I it was all, it was, it was so saggy. It was basically, I was driving on a rim. Well, it was only 20 feet away from the garage, but you know what I mean? It was, it was just like a leather attached to the rim. Not like, oh, it looks a little saggy. It was just, it was just a leather. And I, I freaked out. Like, oh no, this is not good. I thought the car was going to let me know, but did not let me know. And I, I could have went around the block to get into the garage, but I was too scared and I was so paranoid that the rim was going to get frigged because when when the tire gets a hole or, or leakage, it's not that expensive, but when the rim bends or whatever and I have to get the rim exchanged, that's more expensive. So I was freaking out. So I just I just backed all the way back and whole time i was like luna luna the car is frigged luna the tire is flat oh no oh no and then i drove the car back into the garage i said oh, there is i don't think we can go to daycare anymore i don't think we can go to daycare today and she said and and i dressed her up so nicely because we wrote her birthday invitations um last night um to give it to the daycare kids and today was the day we we're gonna give the invitation 
and she she had like really cute red bow and um dress and everything it was so cute she she she's she's like uber duper cute cuteness overdose and um she didn't get to show off her cuteness today which was really sad and then she said so there's no daycare today and i said yeah sorry and then she said my friend's gonna miss me my friends are gonna be sad i'm like i'm sorry i'm sorry the car's this flat and then um i went back in and then what was it she said he's like whoops sorry he 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 whoops sorry he 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 and she just kept re repeating whoops sorry he 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 and i was panicking i said could we have some quiet here please and then she said mommy be nice be nice mommy car i know car's tire is flat but you gotta be nice <laughs> i was like oh wow i'm sorry okay i'm, I'm sorry <laughs> my daughter right that's what you said to me you said be nice mommy oh i'm sorry right what did you say you said be nice mommy can you say can you repeat <laughs> that's right you said be nice mommy I know car tire is flat, but be nice, mommy. I said, I'm sorry. <laughs> where did where'd Dada go? Oh, he's gonna go get some snack. Oh, you ate all the goldfish cracker, though. Oh, no. Sometimes when she's at home and Ryan's streaming and Ryan goes, Arr! and then he just screams. She goes, whoa, what's wrong with daddy? <laughs> and I tell her, oh, he must be very excited. And then she goes, oh, okay. But now she doesn't really get disturbed by it. Honestly, it's almost a daily occurrence. <laughs> she's not wrong. Dude, she is so, uh, how would I say it? She is so normal, my daughter. I'm so proud of her. She is, she's more normal than any other normal people that I know. When we are outside, I told you, right? I got, I told you the story where me and my daughter were walking back from the grocery store. And it was, it was a very windy day. And there was a broken off branch next to the tree. And then my daughter said, oh, mommy, look, what is that? And I first saw the broken branch. I said, oh, that's a broken branch. And right next to it was a dead squirrel lying down. And I, I freaked out because when I realized, like even before I realized it was a dead squirrel, I saw there was a fly digging into the eye hole. And I said, what's that thing? And then I realized it was a dead squirrel. And I freaked out. I said, ah, and then I jumped and my daughter, she said, ah, and I said, oh, I'm sorry. Did I scare you? And then she said, no, mommy, shh, you gotta be quiet in the public. And I said, oh, I'm sorry. And she said, did I, did I scare you? And she said, no, I'm upset because mommy is so loud. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm so scared that people might think that I have this attitude towards my daughter. It's not true. It's not true. I do not have this attitude with my daughter. I think I think she's learning this from daycare. I'm I'm a little worried that people might think that I'm I'm oh I'm upset because you're so loud in the public. I have never been like that to her. But she went, Shh, mommy, shh. You cannot be so loud in the public. And I said, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> and, she, and the whole whole way back through, whole, whole way back to the house, whole time she's like, I'm upset because mommy's so loud. Like, she couldn't understand why I was loud. Like, she realized that it was a dead squirrel, but she doesn't realize why I need to be so loud about it. And I'm seeing she's so normal, right? It's crazy. She's more normal than the most normal person that I know. She's so based. And... It's it's crazy. Yesterday she had an accident. She poop and peed a little bit in her big girl's pants. And I got upset. 
And I was, and I was like, you know, I was like, oh my gosh, you know, this potty training is never ending. I have to do laundry every day. I'm, it's, it's killing me. And I got a little upset, and I said, "Mommy is upset that you didn't use the potty." And she said, "Accidents happen." And I'm like, "I know accidents happen, but no more accident in the house. This is, this is not good." And she said, "Okay." And then, um, it was brushing teeth time. I said. Luna, come here right now. We're going to brush our teeth. And then she said, Mommy, be nice. <laughs> and I was like, Oh, I almost got dumbfounded when she said that. Because I don't really, I don't say, Luna, be nice to me. But she just, she said, Mommy, be nice. And I just like, who? Huh? And she said, I had a little accident. But Mommy, you got to be nice to me. <laughs> I was like, Oh my god! <laughs> she will not. She will not be pushed around even in her house, and she's two years old, dude. She's two. <laughs> and I said, "I'm sorry. I'm sorry." Mommy was a little upset because you didn't use potty, and she said. Okay, accidents happen. And I said, no more accidents in the house, okay? And she said, okay, I promise. No more accidents. And I said, okay, thank you. And then um, it was a story time. So I was reading her a book, a Toy Story book. And she said, can you read it in your bedroom? And I said, why my bedroom? And she's like, I like your bed. So we went to the bedroom. And then I noticed there was a wet spot on our bed. And I said, oh my god, did you pee in our bed? And she freaked out and she said, no, I will never ever pee in your bed. Pinky promise, I would never do that. And I said, are you sure? What's this? And she said, it's just water. Water from my sleep. I never ever will pee in your bed. Like she was, I have never seen her so, it was like such, it's like a reaction that like how would you, how dare you would even think that it would be me. It's I, I would never ever do it. It was it was it was a crazy reaction. I was like, oh. And then it almost oh she almost I mean she's she's telling the truth, but if she was not telling the truth, I would have guessed lit just by her reaction. Like she was so like I would never do such a thing. You know? <laughs> no, it's she was right. Her sleeve got wet from brushing her teeth. So the from the wet sleeve, the the water transfer onto our bed. Well, I mean, I did the smell check and it was not pee. So I'm like, oh, and she's a pinky promise. I'm like, pink, okay, okay. And then um, I'm not tooting my own horn, but my daughter, the daycare provider, she's been doing the daycare for. I mean, she said almost uh, what like. 20 years or something she says she's been in this field for 20 years or so and she said luna is the smartest kid i have ever cared for and and uh she not only said that was she says it almost once a week and she tells me that her speaking is around seven year old seven to eight year old and I honestly, I have to agree with her because some of the vocabs that she used, I didn't even use them until I was in middle school. So I, I'm like, where did you learn that? I'm freaking out. And um, she said, our daycare provider said, lots of kids talk. They, they all talk around that age. But most of times, they just kind of mumble. It's very hard to understand. They don't have a coherent sentences. They would say something and then suddenly they something they say something else. It's very hard to follow what they're trying to say. But Luna has start to the end and has a point and she is trying to actually have a conversation with you. And um, she, she says she's always getting surprised every week. And I think this week she had another um, Eureka. Her, her brain got bigger. And she's talking even better. And I still cannot believe she's only two. <laughs> I think she is learning vocab from Ryan. I mean, 
yesterday she was talking to me about reflection she said mommy can you make reflection and i said oh reflection on what like how do you make reflections i'm like how is it? in my head i'm like what is she it's so crazy how she knows ref i mean i taught her what reflection was when she said um i can see myself and i said oh yeah that's just the reflection that's why you can see yourself that's the only thing i i said um a week or two ago and then yesterday last night she said mommy i can see my reflection oh holy holy dude and she yeah she goes i like how how do you see your how do you see your face how do you see the reflection i said oh mirror is basically how you see the reflection that's how you see your face it's by the reflection and she goes oh, okay it's crazy dude i'm telling you she also uses although or though either like either way like she just uses so many vocams that i have not used since i was i maybe started using those in uh, middle school but she just uses it in her regular daily speech it's freaking me out she uses it either all the time she goes i don't like that either but then she kind of pronounces it a little funny she goes i don't like that either or either and either in like in between that like either or something no she does not she has not used whom but then ryan and i we never use whom in our speech like we talk a lot to each other too <laughs> ryan and i we talk a lot during dinner time and i think that's how she picks up the speech skills um but we don't really use who or whom <laughs> and then yesterday after dinner um i gave her some ice cream and i said here here's your ice cream and she said mm, thank you oh it's so good and i said oh, ice cream ice cream and then and then she picked it up and she said ice cream so good gang gang <laughs> ice cream ice cream ice cream so good gang gang it was so cute it's so good you don't understand it's so cute here hold on um i took a video of last night so it's so cute when she says ghostbusters i don't know how to mimic it and she goes like ghostbusters it's so cute and ryan was singing ghostbusters song last night to her you gotta hear her I, I took a video It's so cute, right? <laughs> Goose fishers. Isn't that so cute? And this is her today singing. Do you know this Pokemon? She was watching Pokemon video. She was singing so well, and I I tried to took a video, and then she's like, "Hey, <laughs> open, shut them." And then I think this is her trying to sing "Holiday" by Weezer. I think. Oh no, it's it's a friend of me, Toy Story. <laughs> she's 
<laughs> she's too busy coloring. That's really cute. Where's the holiday? Do I have the holiday? Oh, no, I don't have her singing holiday. Oh, it's so cute. One day she said, Mommy, you're a baby. You're my baby. And I said, okay. And then she said, let's go to the bed. And then we went to the bed. And she talked me in. And then she sang me Holiday by Wiz Weezer. I don't even know the song. I just know the song by her singing. And it's so sweet. It's so sweet. Oh my god. And uh, when Ryan is singing the song to her, it's it's so cute. I die every time. <clears throat> That's not a two-year-old. That's my two-year-old. That's my two-year-old. Let me see if there's other good good ones. I got. I try to make some. Um. Here. I try to make sure I record good ones. What was what was? Wait, hold on. There's so many videos. I don't remember what's what. <laughs> She's doing the dance. <laughs> oh. Uh, there's a lot. There's a lot good ones. I just don't know which was which. But my goal is to um record her singing holiday. She knows all the lyrics too. It's crazy. I don't know the lyrics, so I can't even mimic it. I think nowadays she likes to sing a lot. So she tries to sing almost all the time. Hello, Luca. This one's for those ice cold Michelle Pfeiffer, the white gold. This one's for the good girls, them hood girls, straight masterpieces. Styling, flying, living it up in the city. Got the Saint Laurent with the chucks on. I gotta kiss myself, I'm so pretty. It's too hot, hot darn. Make a dragon wanna retire, man. Too hot, I'm too hot. Say my name, you know who I am, I'm too hot. Girls hit your hallelujahs. Girls hit your hallelujahs. Girls hit your hallelujahs. Cause uptown funk gonna give it to ya. Cause uptown funk gonna give it to ya. Cause uptown funk gonna give it to ya. Saturday night can move in the spot. Don't believe me, just watch. Yeah, I do. It's the that song comes up a lot on the Peloton. <laughs> like a lot. <laughs> like all the time.